Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Today I wanted to talk about one of the options that you can find in both 2D adaptive clearing and 3D adaptive clearing. And that option allows the cutter to cut two directions. So primarily when we use adaptive clearing, by default, the cutter only cuts one direction. And usually for most users, that direction is a climb cut. There is an option to make that cut go both ways. So one direction, it'll climb cut and then it will conventional cut on the way back. And so what I want to do is go through a couple parts and take a look to see when it makes sense to use both ways and when it doesn't. I seem to run into two groups of people. There's one group of people that don't really even know that both ways is an option. And then there's another group that just have it on all the time. And we're going to find out, hopefully, in this uh, video, if one or the other is a smarter choice. And I think what we're going to find out is it depends. The answer is going to be is it depends on the geometry. So let's take a look at the two files that I have set up that we're going to work with. So right now, what you see on the screen is a piece of stock. I've got my stock set up to one inch thick. It's five inches in depth and it is six inches in width. And so I've already got some tool paths set up on this. I faced off the top, I've got an adaptive clear out the outside and a 2D contouring toolpath. So all we need to do is work on clearing out these two pockets. And my intention is to take the front pocket and to do a single way adaptive clearing. And on the back pocket, we're gonna do a two way adaptive clearing back here. If we look at these pockets, the width of this pocket is roughly five inches. In this direction, it is uh, two inches. So it's a pretty decent sized pocket and the depth on this is going to be 0.625. So that'll be well within the two times diameter range uh, for being able to do this in a single pass with an adaptive clearing operation. So I wanna go one direction adaptive on the front and both ways adaptive in the back and do a timing between these two. I also want to go and do this to a secondary piece and on this piece, I have some different test slots cut. They all have the same fillet radius on them of a quarter of an inch. And if we look, the first pocket is a half inch wide. The second pocket is three quarters of an inch. It goes up to an inch and finally finishes at an inch and a half. So we're going to see, even if we go look at these times right now, we can see that relatively all the times for both and single ways are pretty close. I have a feeling that that is not going to be the case when we run these on the machines though. So hop, let's hop back over to this file and add some tool paths. So I wanna start out by doing a one-way adaptive on this front pocket. I'm gonna to go to the 2D menu and I'm gonna select 2D adaptive clearing and I'm gonna grab this uh, number two tool. It's a 3 8 inch carbide, three flute end mill with a Molly S coating on it. Uh, had some pretty good luck doing some testing on this so far. I'm gonna run this at 10,000 RPM and 3,000 of an inch per tooth, which is gonna give us a cutting feed rate of 90 inches a minute. For my geometry, I'm gonna go and select this edge right there. That's the pocket that I wanna cut. And so that's where I want the cutter to, to do its thing. For the heights, I'm gonna cut from the stock top to the selected contours, that's fine. So it's gonna do one depth pass. On the passes, it's going to take 75 thou for its optimal load. I'm gonna edit the expression and that's going to be 20% of the tool diameter. Um, people ask a lot of times, why is this called optimal load? It's because this tool path, as the tool gets into a sharper corner, it will adapt the amount of step over to make it smaller to maintain the tool engagement angle. So this is the best it's ever gonna do, and it might be less as the software needs to to maintain the tool engagement angle. I am going to leave 10 thousandths of an inch of floor and wall stock. Like I said, I don't need to do multiple depths on this. I'm also going to turn on smoothing for this so I can reduce the amount of G-code that I export. And I'm going to make a couple changes here on the linking tab. I'm going to change my, my uh, stay down level to be, I'm going to say 90%. I want to do a lift height of 0 0.01 when it stays down and returns back to the beginning of the cut. And I'm going to put a no engagement feed rate of 500 inches a minute. Now, an important note here, I don't know what the maximum cutting feed rate of my machine is. And that's kind of an important thing. I do know that I can put whatever I want to in this field as fast as I want it to go. I could put 10,000 inches a minute in here and it's not gonna error out in the code and the machine's just gonna try to do the best that it can. But to try to make this test a little bit more fair on what the time that Fusion reports, I'm gonna put in 500 inches a minute 
and that's what it's going to try to do when it returns back to the beginning. I'm also going to really increase the stay down level. I'm going to put a five inch stay down level down in here because I want the cutter to stay down as it goes back and forth instead of lifting and retracting going back to the beginning. So I want the cut to, to stay down across the bottom. All right, with that being said, I think I'm good to go ahead and hit okay and see what we get for toolpath. So it'll take just a second to calculate, shouldn't take too long. And you can see that I'm getting no lift moves on here. So the tool staying down, it's starting here, it's finishing here, no lifts going on there. Okay, so uh, because I've got most of my parameters set for this the way I want it to, I'm just gonna right click and say duplicate. And now, let me rename this one to be uh, 2D Adaptive One Way. And let's rename this one to be Both Ways. And let's go edit this and make some changes to the pocket. So I'm gonna get rid of that chain and reselect a new chain. So I'm gonna grab the chain in the back. Over on the Passes tab, I am gonna make some changes here. The first one is going to be that I wanna go both ways. So remember my cutter was cutting at 90 inches a minute. Now on the other way feed rate, it's gonna be at 81. My other way optimal load is the same as the optimal load and this tool is not going to cut as well conventional cutting as it does climb cutting. So I am going to edit the expression and you can see it's currently set to be equal to optimal load. I'm going to reduce that slightly. So I'm gonna say optimal load times 0.2. Let's take 20% uh, reduce it by that amount and I'll hit okay, and I did it the other wrong way. I wanna do 80% of the optimal load. So there we go. So, I, so we're gonna, going one direction, it's gonna do 75,000 step over as an optimal load. Coming back when it's conventional cutting, it's gonna do 60,000 of an inch and reduce the feed rate down to 81 inches a minute. So I'm okay with that, and I'm gonna leave everything else the same, and I'll hit okay and it calculates my adaptive going across. And let's just take a quick look and see how this is different than a traditional adaptive clearing. So I'll simulate this, let's do this. I'm gonna simulate it from the setup and then I'm gonna have it play from the adaptive. I wanna turn on the stock and I'm gonna set this to be tail. I'll slow this down a little bit and now we'll hit play. And so what we'll see is the cutter is going to cut and then it's gonna cut back the other way. So it's gonna go back and forth and back and forth, and each time it's going from side to side, it's making a cut. Chips are coming off of the cutter. Whereas, if we were to go look at the front one really quick, so I'll do a simulate the setup from this adaptive, and again, we'll hit play. This is cutting chips right now, and then it pulls off the stock and returns back, and then it cuts chips, so every time when this cutter returns back to the beginning in this case, it's not cutting anything. If we look at the times, the machining time that Fusion says, it says that this one's gonna take a minute and 52, and this one's gonna take a minute and 53. I think we're gonna find out that this, the both ways is gonna be quite a bit faster in this case, because it's cutting both directions, where this one is only cutting one direction. And there's a couple reasons for that. One is that 500 inches a minute that I put for the no engagement feed rate is probably not accurate. It also doesn't take into account acceleration and deceleration times. It just assumes that as soon as it transitions, it's instantly at 500 inches a minute, and that's not the case. Plus the fact that I don't think this machine can do 500 inches a minute as a cutting feed rate. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think this both ways adapter is gonna be a decent amount faster than the single way. Let's go take a look at this other part a little bit. Um, and what we'll see here, like I've already talked about, is I've, it shows that most of these single way and both ways cuts are about the same amount of time. And I think we're gonna see, here's my prediction. I think we're gonna find out that in the small slot, the half inch wide slot for these two guys right here, I think we're gonna find out that the one way is going to be a lot quicker. Same thing for the three quarter and maybe even for the one inch. Uh, but once the wider the pocket gets, the less time it takes the cutter to make its move to re-engage the material. So as it comes in, it's got to do kind of a loop. So it gets reset to come back across to do its, its con, uh, conventional cutting move. Where on this side, it's just going to cut, 
come back, go back to the beginning cut. So it's just kind of doing that kind of circular move where on the backside it's going to try to do the almost like a figure eight. And when it's doing that figure eight move, I think it's going to eat up a lot more time than what Fusion is calculating for here. And so that's where it's going to be fun, I think, to be able to go out to the machine and run both versions of this part and just see is two-way adaptive faster than one way? And the answer to that question is probably, maybe. We don't know. Um, I think it's going to depend a lot on the geometry and, and what we're cutting. So the bigger the pocket, the faster I think both ways is going to be. The smaller the pocket, I think both ways is going to end up being quite a bit slower than just one way. But the good news is we're going to go out to the machine and do some testing and uh, hopefully help to answer that question. If you have any questions on this, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can always shoot me an email to kevin at mechanicaladvantage.com for ideas you have. And I really want to say thank you to everybody. I've been starting to get a lot of emails to that address um, with suggestions and questions and comments. So that's great. Uh, love to keep, love to know people are watching the videos anyway. So uh, hopefully you found this one helpful. Hopefully you'll stick around for the machining side of this uh, that'll come out shortly. And as always, thanks for watching.